yes and amen, whose word cannot be broken. Your word is eternal. The world will abide forever and ever. This morning again, we have come at this retirement service that will speak to our circumstances and our situations. Father, address our hearts, guide and lead us aright. Speak so that we may hear you as you speak to us. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What strong reason why we are here today is one of us who in the last 60, 65 years was brought to planet Earth and in the course of his sojourning on Earth God placed a call upon him, a divine call to serve in his divine ministry, God's divine ministry. It is also in keeping with the church's policy that when a minister of God clocks 65 years, he or she would have to retire and retire for good or if a minister of God or a servant of God engaged and employed by the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria clocks either 45 years of service or 65. Anyone that comes first, the person has to bow out in the form of retirement. Assuming a pastor has worked for 45 years and the pastor is not up to 65, it's compulsory that the pastor has to go. But sometimes I think, I sit down and ask, who is that pastor who will work for five, 45 years without clocking 65 years? When did he start the ministry? <laughs> praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. I hope such pastor has not made Magumago with his age. But that's just by the way. Please, that is just what by the way, church, amen. amen. Today, one of us, our father, our colleague, our friend, our pastor and minister of the gospel, the right Reverend John Bassi Ate, the presbytery have published today to formally and officially retire him from active service in court, though he is still very active, very energetic, very robust, very juicy, and very promising. God will sustain him and sustain his family in Jesus' name. I'd like to just speak to us very briefly because in the course of the service, a father who is also retiring has a retirement screening exercise today. So I said, what a double barrier day for him. So you and I will go, we are going to ensure that we do everything very snappy, but still we will carry the presence of God with us. At every point in time, we are not going to rush but we'll be able to manage our time very well so that he does not live here late to the retirement screening exercise. God will bless him and bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. I choose to address us this morning on a very simple topic that says, I will be with you. The Lord will be with you. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Before our brother was formed 
in his mother's womb. God knew him. God fashioned him. God produced him. God packaged him from heaven and sent him down on earth here and introduced him to a particular woman, I mean a woman's womb, and he came out as a baby and God helped him to go through the different developmental stages of life. And all of these various developmental stages of life, God had been with him. And God will continue to be with him. And for every one of us, as we go through different stages of life, God had never abandoned us. And God would never abandon us. Whether at our old age, he will be with us. Whether at our middle age, he will be with us. Whether at our young age, the Lord will be with us. Whether at our tender age, the Lord will be with us. Why would the Lord be with us? It is because the Lord is the ancient of days. He is the ancient of days. All days are in his hands. He controls every second. He controls every minute. He controls every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year. Our God is in control. And he has made our brother fearfully. He has fearfully and he has wonderfully made him church. Amen. Amen. So I come to you in summary that the Lord will be with him and that the Lord will be with each and every one of us. When you are not too certain about life, God is there with you. When you are going through your moments of trials and temptation, the Lord God Almighty is there with you. And he has promised to be with you even to the close of the age. So when uncertainty sets in, God is with us. When it appears as if your glory is fading away, there is a glory restorer. Amen. Your glory shall not fade away. Amen. When men say, Ikabo, over your life, I have come to tell you that Ikabo shall not take over your life. Amen. Your glory, the glory of God will restore back to you. Amen. His presence will be noticed in your life. Amen. His hand will give you a touch. For he said, this is the finger of God. You shall experience the finger of God. Amen. Again, I repeat, when it does appear as if your glory is fading away, never forget that the one who restores glory is with you. Amen. Your glory will be restored. Amen. Your season of joy will be restored. Amen. Your season of gladness will be restored. Amen. God shall visit you in a very unique and in a very special way to make things better for you. He will do you good. He will add value to your life. I said the Lord shall add value to your life. The Lord shall add value to your life. The Lord shall give you increase. The Lord shall give you a touch that will take you to the mountain of experience. Why? Because the Lord is with you. So he was, even with our ancient parents. So he was with the first parents on earth, Adam and Eve. So he was with Noah. Even there was so much flood on the earth. He reigned for 150 days and the entire world was swallowed up. But Noah and all those who were faithful to God, only eight of them in number. Did God abandon them? No. Church, talk to me. Did God abandon them? No. He did not abandon them. When you go through your flood moment, he will never abandon you. Amen. God was with Noah. God was with Abraham. God was with Isaac. God was with Jacob. God was with Joseph. Even when the highest level of conspiracy was targeted at Joseph, the Lord never abandoned Joseph. So I don't know the moment you are in today. Are you going through one conspiracy or the other? But I have come to impress on your mind that the Lord will see you through. Yeah. The Lord shall see you through. Yeah. And your children going through skipping in life, 
Are there people skipping them in life? Are there people acting in their life like Adonijah or Absalom? These were two sons of Abraham, I mean, two sons of David. But they turn around to plan to skip their own father, David, from existence. Two brothers, and their father was David. It is still happening in our generation. There are some people who want to skim their parents out of existence or vice versa. But the Lord was with David. And as because, because the Lord, because the Lord was with David, the Lord shall be with you. Yeah. So whether I tell you, hold on fast to the Lord. The Lord shall be with you. The Lord shall be with your wife. The Lord shall be with every loved one of yours. And he shall take you to the place he wants you to be. Even though you are retiring, don't be afraid. Let fear not grip you. That man that walked on top of the sea and when Peter saw him and Peter cried out, beat me to come. And he said, please, Peter, come. Peter came. Peter was the second man that walked on top of the sea. But he began singing, when we are not fear, come in. Don't allow fear to grip you. Don't allow fear to grip you. Deal with the foundation of fear. Fear is the antithesis of faith. The full of faith, faith in God Almighty, will keep you and weather you through the thick and thin of life. And I can assure you that you will make it in life. For the rest of the days and for the rest of the years you will live, you shall surely make it. What did I say? You shall surely make you. Make it. And for every one of us hearing the sound of my voice, you shall surely make it. Yeah. Little boy, little girl, you shall make it. Whether you are in your primary school days or in your secondary school days, the Lord is with you. Your university education is gradually coming. You shall get to that level because the Lord shall be with you. I say the Lord shall be with you. He was with Deborah. He was with Joseph. He was with Abraham. He was with Saul. Now became Paul. The disciples of God were never abandoned by him. He never rejected them. God stood by them. Even when they were going through one of the highest level of trials in their lives. The New Testament church in Acts of the Apostles was subjected to serious global conspiracy then. The church was subjected to serious persecution. What we are going through in this 21st or getting to 22nd century of Christianity, God did not abandon them. He led them and he stood and they remained the unstoppable church. We are the unstoppable church. I say we are the unstoppable church. No man can stop us. We will continue to work, make progress. Because the Bible has said, you are Peter and on this rock will I build my church. And the gates of her shall never prevail against the church. Nothing absolutely human material, nothing ephemeral, nothing scientific, nothing technological, nothing occult, nothing demonic or satanic. No matter the highest level of satanic manipulation, the church shall continue to remain one. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. So I urge every one of us this morning, don't be, don't live in fear. The economic situation in the country can inject fear in us. When our God operates in budget surplus, no budget deficit. His words in Philippians 4 19 still remains very relevant to us. And I used to tell people that we Presbyterians will believe in 419. But this 419 is not a 419 as witnessed in the world or as interpreted in the world in a secular point of view. Our 419 is Philippians 419. What does it say? My God shall do what? Supply your needs according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The second 419 of our church is what? ROCH 419. What does it say? How sweet word the name of Jesus sound. That is our 419. And it shall work out well for us. When the dollar, ex when the exchange rate keeps going up, keeps going up, 
never mind, God will continue to sustain us because he has promised to be with us. In plenty, he will be with us. In scarcity, he will be with us. In lack and in want, God will be with us. Finally, as I summarize, he was with Joshua. When Moses died, Joshua took over. We are not here in this, the memorial service. We are here to retire God's servant. And so the promises he made, God's promises he made to Joshua, they are still relevant to us today. One of eight, he told him in verse number five of Joshua 1, he said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. God will never leave you. Amen. God will never abandon you. And he reminded Joshua in verse number nine, he said, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. By the same token, God addresses us again. And by way of reminder, he tells us that he, that we should be strong, we should be courageous, we should not be terrified, we should not be afraid, we should not be discouraged. The political, economic situation, or time bomb, or timetable of our country should not terrify us, should not make us get discouraged. For he, the Lord our God, will be with us in every circumstance and in every situation. For he is God. He controls the entire universe. He superintends over the affairs of men and he presides over every nation on the earth. No matter how corrupt the nation might be, God is on top of every situation and he's on top of every Nigerian situation. A moment of glory is coming. The glory has begun already. It's only waiting for full-blown glory and manifestation because God is the God of Nigerians. I say God is the God of Nigerians. God is the God of Presbyterians. He will never abandon you. He will be with you. He will bless you. He will promote you. He will elevate you. He will give you accelerated hearing. In whatever situation you are going through, God will never abandon you. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. So God, as you retire, Return fully into God's word, number one. Return fully into prayers. Three, two, retire three into greater fellowship with God. Amen. Point number four, retire into pure evangelism. Point number five, retire into aggressive visitation and follow up. As you do this, may the good Lord bless you eternally. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you.